We're going to come now to the heart of the matter, the belly of the modeling beast, and that's the idea of a schema. Schemas are the way that we're going to model information using XML. So let me go over some of the concepts of, of schemas that will help you to get started on them. And then after this, we'll go into a lot of the details and a lot of the mechanics of schema. But I don't want you to get too caught up in the mechanics. I want you for at least a moment to stay at the higher level and understand the idea of the schema, the idea of the model, the idea of the way of looking at a higher level at the system that you're trying to create. So some concepts, some basic concepts of schema. First, the word schema itself. It's defined in a lot of ways in a lot of different um, disciplines. The way that we're going to look at it is the idea of a schematic, a view, a structural view, an overview of the structure of a system. And in our case, the system obviously is an information system. And we know that from the perspective of this class, information systems consist of items, item types, information item types, and access structures. So it's a structural, a systematic, a schematic view of that system. Now, of course, it could be a schematic view of any system, but that's the system that we're studying in this course. So one thing to understand, and the first thing really to understand about schemas, is that they're uh, rules and regulations. They define the rules and regulations of an instance over and above the rules and regulations of well-formedness that that instance has to obey in order to be considered okay. And the word for okay in, in, the, in the schema world is valid. So if you remember, we had rules of well-formedness. Those are rules like tags that open must close and uh, attributes have to be quoted and that sort of thing. Those are the basic entry rules, the rules of well-formedness so that something can be considered an XML file at all over and above those simple rules that really say nothing about the semantics, the meaning of the file, they just say how the file has to be formed, there are the rules of validity. Those rules of validity are stored in the schema. So we have lots of rules and regulations that we'll, do, that we'll dive into later on that are defined in the schema that say how an XML instance has to behave in order to be considered good. And the good from the schema standpoint is the word valid. Well-formed means it obeys the basic rules of XML structure. Valid means it obeys the additional rules inside the schema. So now that we know that schemas are rules and regulations, let's deal with a kind of a, a nagging fact about schemas that sometimes is hard for people to come to grips with. And that's that the schema itself is an XML file. So what does that mean? It means we're using an XML file to define the structure of another XML file. And you might say, well, that's kind of weird. How can XML define XML? Don't we need something else outside of XML to define XML? And in fact, philosophically, we sort of do. But in practical terms, we don't at all. And let me give you another one that's even more mind-bending than an XML file defining another XML file, and that's the idea of a dictionary. What does a dictionary do? A dictionary defines words. But what does it use to define those words? Other words. So we have a self-referential system there as well. The dictionary is a self-referential system that uses words to define words. And you might want to say, well, we need something beyond words to define the words because otherwise, what defines the words that define the words? And the answer is magically or somehow neurologically nothing defines those words except other words. So it's a self-referential system. And schemas work the same way. The XML file that is a schema defines the rules of another XML file, which is the instance. Now, something you might reasonably ask is, well, if the schema is an XML file, what defines the rules of the schema XML file? And in fact, there's a schema of schemas that defines the rules of the schema instance. So the schema is an instance of tags, and those tags are defined by the schema of schemas. Now, before we get too kind of torn up and confused with this, let me make it real simple. We have an instance. There's another file called the schema. The schema defines the rules of those instances. Now there's a third file that you'll never see that defines the rules of the rules. What's a valid rule and what isn't a valid rule? So you'll never see that schema of schemas, but you'll see lots of schemas. So the practical way to think of this before we get too tangled up in the, um, in the philosophy of it is the schema file defines the rules. And if you were to look at the text of the schema file, you'd see an XML file and that XML file would consist of lots of tags that are rule-defining tags. And for practical purposes, there's really only two files concerned, and for practical purposes, those files are very different in nature. 
The instance file is the one that has all the tags in it, and the schema file is the one that has all the rules in it. So dwell a little bit on the philosophical idea, but then come around to the very practical idea that the schema contains rules, the instance contains the, uh, the tags that obey those rules, and they're rules over and above the rules of well-formedness. Okay, so that's the mechanics of schema. But from our standpoint, why schemas are important is because the schema is the modeling environment. The schema is the place where we're going to create an information model. The model of what our information types and our access structures have to consist of. So that's why they're important, and that's why I consider them to be really the central concept. If you get out of this class not knowing how to do transforms, eh, I'm not that concerned. But if you get out of this class not knowing how to model information using schemas, then I would be concerned because that I consider to be a core talent of any information professional. The ability to understand an information context and model it, explicitly define the rules of that context. And as we said, the main rules that we'll be working with are rules of information types and rules of access structures. And then the information items must obey those rules. And the information items will be organized by the access structures. Okay, so the reason that we're really concerned with schemas is because they're a modeling environment. And so that's why they're central to this course.